Today I thought I'd talk about the harmonic series. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Every musician ought to have at least a basic understanding of the harmonic series. It's at the core of literally everything we do in music in one way or another, and it goes a long way in explaining why some things sound very pleasing to our ears and other things don't. First thing you have to understand is that the harmonic series is a natural phenomenon. Anytime you hear a sound, any sound at all, you're hearing it and its effects on that sound. To visualize how it works, imagine a vibrating string. We'll say it's tuned to A at 110 hertz. That's the A string on your guitar, by the way. If I stop the string at exactly its midpoint and only vibrate half of it, the frequency will be exactly double that of the full length of the string. So it'll be 220 hertz. 220 hertz is A an octave higher. Here is this A. And here is this A. Now if I only vibrate a third of the string, the resulting frequency will be three times that of the full length of the string. So 330 hertz, which is E, an octave plus a perfect fifth higher. A fourth of the string will produce a frequency that's four times higher than that of the full length of the string, which in this case will be 440 hertz. That's A, two octaves higher than the open string. I can do this infinitely. I can take a fifth, sixth, seventh of the string ad infinitum. So here's the thing. When you hear a vibrating string, such as the A string on your guitar, you're actually hearing all of these things simultaneously and so on. The string physically vibrates like this with all these nodes, except there's an infinite number of nodes. A node is like a connecting point where no vibration is occurring. So in the split in half one, the node is exactly in the center of the string and both halves of the string are oscillating. And there's no oscillation here, except this point along the string is moving because it's moving up and down in the fundamental. Combine all of this and you end up with a crazy looking vibration. If I owned a slow motion camera, I'd show you, but surely someone else on the internet has filmed guitars in slow motion. So this goes on infinitely, but you can only perceive so much of it. As you can imagine, if you keep multiplying the fundamental frequency by your sequentially increasing string divisors, the frequency is gonna get really, really high and eventually exceed the upper limit of human hearing, which is about 20,000 hertz if you're young. That limit comes down as you get older. Also, the amplitude of the harmonics generally decreases with each in the series, so even higher ones within the range of human hearing get buried in the mix, so to speak, and they also may decay more quickly. Now you're probably familiar with natural harmonics on the guitar. What you're doing when you play them is isolating the nodes of each harmonic in the series for whatever string you play them on. For example, if you play the 12th fret harmonic, you're isolating the node at the midpoint of the string, which brings out the second harmonic, double the frequency of the open string. The nodes for the third harmonic are at the seventh and 19th frets, this note is an octave and a fifth above the open string. The fourth harmonic can be played at the fifth fret or somewhere up here past where the frets end. This one is two octaves higher than the open string. The fifth harmonic is a little behind the fourth fret. This is two octaves and a pure major third above the open string. The sixth harmonic is a little ahead of the third fret. There it is. This is two octaves and a fifth above the open string. The seventh harmonic is a little behind the third fret. This is two octaves and about a minor seventh above the open string. The eighth harmonic is a little ahead of the second fret. This is three octaves above the open string. Past that, good luck getting them to come out. So beyond being able to bring out these harmonics on the guitar for musical effect, why does the harmonic series matter? Well, for one, it explains why minor chords have a darker, more serious quality to them. Any note you play has a major triad baked into it. The fourth, fifth, and sixth harmonics form a major triad way up above the fundamental. Playing a major triad reinforces those harmonics while also adding the harmonic series of the third and the fifth of the chord. Whereas with a minor triad, the third of the chord is not present as a harmonic in the root, so it's actually sounding in opposition rather than reinforcing, resulting in this darker, more serious quality. 
And that's just one example. Another interesting thing is that the harmonic series is directly responsible for timbre, or the descriptive quality of a sound. For instance, why an oboe has a nasally quality, or why a French horn sounds very warm. It has to do with the relative amplitudes of each of the harmonics. In fact, if you were to generate a bunch of sine waves and set their frequencies according to the harmonic series, you could adjust the volume of each harmonic to imitate the sound of virtually any pitched instrument. What I just described is called additive synthesis, and it's the basis of how many analog synthesizers produce different tones. Look at this frequency spectrum when I play the open A string on my guitar. You can literally see the harmonics at all these peaks. What's interesting is the first three harmonics are of about equal amplitude, and many of the upper harmonics decay very quickly. See, these three all stay even with each other a bit longer. The fundamental outlasts them all, though. The harmonic series also partly explains why intervals of a fifth are so important in Western music. The fifth is the third harmonic, one of the more audible harmonics in the series. It's also important in understanding different tuning systems, such as just intonation, quarter comma mean tone, equal temperament. That will be a topic for another video. I think that's enough for now. So I hope you gained a little understanding out of that. I'll probably talk more about this in future videos. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.